will want to begin our journey to Mars by launching eastward from a launch pad near the equator. By doing so, we can get a free delta V of 0.5 km per second from the rotation of the Earth. Let's assume that SpaceX's Super Heavy booster can put Starship into low Earth orbit with 100 metric tons of cargo. When fully fueled in low Earth orbit, Starship is capable of sending 100 tons of cargo to Mars, but fully fueled it would weigh too much for the Super Heavy booster to lift to orbit. This means the tanks have to be filled in orbit by a second Starship, which is specifically designed to deliver propellant in space. Since Starship's tanks can hold 1,200 tons of propellant, Elon estimates it will require 8 additional launches to fill them if 150 tons of propellant can be delivered at a time. Fun fact about propellant usage. On a direct trip from Earth to Mars, simply getting from the launch pad to low Earth orbit requires using 80% or more of the propellant that will be needed for the entire mission. The rest of the 400 million kilometer journey can then be accomplished with the remaining 20%. That's like using the majority of your car's gas tank to leave the driveway and then coasting across the country on fumes. This is made possible due to the fact that there's no friction in space. So once you get moving, you can maintain your velocity without the need for additional energy. As Robert Heinlein once said, once you're in orbit, you're halfway to anywhere. Anyway, let's get back to Starship's journey to Mars. Once we're fully fueled in a low Earth parking orbit, the next step is to fire the engines again to achieve a hyperbolic orbit to escape the Earth's sphere of influence. The burn has to occur at the right time in the orbit to propel us in the same direction the Earth is orbiting the Sun. This way, our velocity upon escape can be added to the Earth's orbital velocity as opposed to subtracted from it. The burn to achieve Earth escape velocity from low Earth orbit requires a delta V of 3.2 km per second. But this velocity isn't enough to get to Mars. Escape velocity alone would leave us orbiting the Sun right next to Earth. We'll need a small additional boost beyond escape velocity to climb higher in the Sun's gravity well and reach Mars's orbit, where, if we planned everything out properly, Mars will be waiting for us. From low Earth orbit, it takes 3.6 km per second to get on a 9-month trajectory toward Mars, and on arrival, another 6 to capture into orbit, lower the orbit, and land softly on the surface. To get on a trajectory toward the Moon from low Earth orbit requires a delta V of 3.1 km per second, and then another 2.5 to capture into orbit, lower the orbit, and land. Therefore, a total delta V of 9.6 km per second is needed to get from low Earth orbit to Mars, but only 5.6 is needed to get to the Moon. When fully fueled in low Earth orbit with 100 metric tons of cargo, Starship only has a delta V potential of 6.9 km per second. So, since Mars requires 9.6 km per second, how is Starship supposed to get to Mars? Keep in mind that delta V depicts how much energy is required to get from one location to another, but it doesn't specify where that energy has to come from. The final leg of the journey to Mars may require a delta V of 6 km per second to slow down, but only 1 km per second of that needs to be provided by Starship's engines. The planet's gravity and atmosphere can be used to provide a free source of delta V, with the gravity helping to capture into orbit, and friction with the atmosphere providing the energy needed to lower the orbit and decelerate for landing. We do still need 1 km per second of delta V to be provided by our engines though, since even a perfect aerobraking maneuver can only slow us down to the planet's terminal velocity.